The year was 2005 when kids from all over the world got home from school and turned their TVs on during February 21st to find out a new animated series had just begun airing on Nickelodeon. That show was a three-year-old idea from two friends from university who had always dreamt of creating their own show. And from that dream came Avatar, The Last Airbender. However, it didn't take long for both audiences and critics alike to realize that Avatar had become so much more than just another kid's TV show. In fact, most of its fans today dislike the term kid's show being used to describe the series at all. Although I've personally never had any gripes with anyone calling it that. Because Avatar had a target audience when it first came out. And that target audience was me. Or at least people like me. I was seven when this series first came out. You're just a child. I still remember very vividly how a childhood friend of mine at school during break said to me, you know, I wonder when Aang will start to learn earthbending. You did it! 16 years ago. So Avatar was geared towards children. Yet somehow, it managed to become something more. Something a very select few pieces of entertainment ever managed to achieve. Because Avatar became... Timeless. Now it's hard to say something about this show that hasn't already been said. So I will begin with my own experience. With how the show hooked me, along with millions of others around the world. Turning us from casual fans of something we have fond memories of, to a devoted fan base that still continues to grow in size today. Because Avatar was unlike anything TV animation had to offer at the time. I remember shows like Spongebob, The Fairly Odd Parents, Teen Titans, and even anime that also continues to have huge fan bases of its own today, such as Yu-Gi-Oh! and obviously Pokemon. But this story about the boy trapped in an iceberg destined to save the world had something different about it. Something I couldn't quite figure out what it was when I was a kid. In fact, I was so clueless at the time that Avatar wasn't even my favorite show. I was very specific when it came to ranking my personal favorites and Ben 10 was actually the one I liked the most, with Avatar coming in second. Well, I was a complete idiot, of course. But in my defense, I literally wasn't old enough to even comprehend a show like Avatar yet. I didn't even finish the series when it first aired and eventually lost interest. The trailers I saw on TV for season 3 were for some reason so short and lame and failed to even get me hyped for the final season. Unfortunately, it turns out that most of that last season didn't even air on Nickelodeon in Mexico. I'm pretty sure I made it to episode 3 and never saw the whole series until many years later. Somehow I never caught the Awakening episode, so I saw the gang in Fire Nation's clothes and was like, what is going on? The show is getting a bit too crazy for me. At around 2011, I recall thinking to myself, hey, I never saw how Avatar ended and how he finally beat the Fire Lord. So I searched on YouTube Avatar Final Fight or something and thought it was way too excessive and over the top. Thinking once more that the series was yet another one that simply got too good for its own good and simply went downhill from there. I have never been so wrong in all my life. Nickelodeon did us Mexican kids dirty by airing the episodes the way that they did. But we also got luckier than most because Avatar has been on Mexican Netflix for as long as I can remember. So around 5 years later when I was 18, I sat down and saw the show from start to finish for the first time. And by the time I was done, I asked myself, holy sh**, how? How is this possible? This show is 10 million times better than I remember it to be. 10 million times better than it had any right to be. I enjoyed watching this more now than I ever did as a kid. So to make sure I wasn't exaggerating and that I wasn't a 7 year old kid trapped in an 18 year old body, I did a very simple experiment. I took out the Ben 10 Season 1 DVD that I bought in Boston 9 years earlier and started watching it. 
and by the time the second episode was done, I was like, yeah, this is fun and all, but it's just not the same. I don't enjoy this anymore, because no show strong point from those I saw as a kid come even close to the ones in The Last Airbender. Usually, when a fantasy world such as this is created, its main focus tends to be on world building. And indeed, Avatar succeeds at creating a complex and intriguing world for our characters to reside in and explore. With a brilliantly thought out magic system, with rules that are easy to understand even upon first viewing, it's a magic system that progresses the narrative, as Aang has to learn to master all four elements, therefore playing a pivotal role in the story. The unbelievable combination of talent and research put into this series accomplished what every fictional universe aims to accomplish, and that is presenting a world to the audience in which they would actually want to live in. Like the first time we saw Empire Strikes Back and we thought, wow, I'd love to be able to move things with my mind. Or when we first saw X-Men and wanted to read people's minds or teleport. So Avatar's world building and its magic system almost always do a job in moving the story forward, which in turn makes its world as interesting as it is. But if I were to list and dwell upon all the aspects that make this series timeless, we'd be here all day. So for now, I will focus on a couple of main elements that I think are two of the most significant in making this show what it is. One being the most overstated in its importance, and the other, for me, is the most underrated of the show's strengths. Because The Last Airbender's greatest element, and the most emphasized on when it comes to talking about its success, is of course, its characters. I honestly find it challenging to think of a single decision made by the main characters that doesn't make sense, that feels out of character. Think back to an episode such as The Runaway, that can sometimes feel like filler, but Avatar makes very smart choices with its filler, always expanding and developing our main heroes and even villains whenever it got the chance, humanizing them, helping us understand the motivation behind every choice, every motive, every action and every facial gesture the main cast make. Think of how realistic Toph's actions are in this one, how she's clearly tired of authority for obvious reasons, and when she's confronted about her greatest insecurity, Toph, the toughest member of the group, snaps. I'll stop when I want to stop, and not when you tell me! But we also understand Katara, who was forced upon the responsibility of being a mother after losing her own, hence her constant scolding. And then, we get this line. I'm not sure I can remember what my mother looked like. It really seems like my whole life, Katara's been the one looking out for me. She's always been the one that's there. And now, when I try to remember my mom, Katara's is the only face I can picture. That line is powerful. It's astonishing how realistically portrayed this moment was. So instinctively, he pictures the only motherly figure that's always been there for him instead. We also understand perfectly why Sokka wants to be a man so early, and a leader just like his father, and the rest of the characters, get the same treatment, especially on The Storm, the 12th episode, when the hero and villain's journeys are first hinted at to be intertwined. That's when the critics and the audiences learn that this was not just another kids show. Hell, I haven't even touched upon Zuko's character art. But there will be time to talk about all the other great characters and aspects of this show some other time. For now I will close with the aspect of the show that is most overlooked. Everyone talks about the characters and the bending and the animation, but I feel like not enough is said about the music. I honestly have no idea how Jeremy Zuckerman did not get countless nominations and awards, or at least twice the recognition that he got for this soundtrack because the amount of creativity and originality he put into this is astonishing. This is a Gujin, it's a Chinese zither. So uh, the instrument was uh, created thousands of years ago. Once we knew we were doing Avatar, we started amassing random instruments. So this is a, um, 
It's called the kalimba, and it's a African thumb piano. Um, this is a Chinese lute, another extremely old instrument. I don't know what, I don't know, what do you even call these? Uh, I guess bead drums. It sounds like a battle cry or something. Yeah, I got a splinter from it. This is a duduk, Armenian wind instrument. Just like the creators and artists drew inspiration from countless cultures for the look of the show, the music did the same thing. But the music is also epic, it's emotional. But more importantly, a soundtrack not only has to sound amazing, it has to be a storyteller in itself. A composer has to be a character within the story. The music needs to have meaning, something that we all understand. Remember how in the Lord of the Rings we hear this? Or this? Dear Bubba. And instantly know what it means? Well, Jeremy did just that with Avatar. Because come on, tell me you don't remember what this means. That's right. That's Sokka explaining a plan. And then when we meet his dad, we get the same theme, but with deeper drums. Let me just clarify a few points for everyone. Today is the day of Black Sun. Symbolizing what Sokka aspires to one day become himself. But I guess my most unpopular opinion about this show, especially with how it sounds, is that I will always prefer it in Spanish. Although there are quite a few animated movies, for example, that I now watch in English despite growing up with the dub, such as The Lion King. But I'm serious that these Chilean voice actors did a marvelous job. Look at how Katara and Sokka really sound like they're being pulled by Aang's air current. He must have triggered it! I'm gonna try and calm him down! Well, do it before he blows us off the mountain! Debe estar enfurecido. I don't even know how they made Sokka sound sometimes like he's even more pissed off. Uh-huh. And how many times have you worn those shoes since you got that fortune? Every day. Then of course it's gonna come true! I don't care what Anwu told you, you have to take a bath sometime! <laughs> but that's just a personal preference. And remember the first time you saw the drill and heard this? That piece of music that we'd heard before suddenly got more epic than it had ever done before in the show. Therefore, it musically represented how the story was getting more and more epic itself as the seasons went by, and how the stakes were getting higher and higher as well. But like I said earlier, the show is such a display of talent in all levels of storytelling and television as a whole, that it's impossible to cover all in one video. One could easily dedicate half an hour to the world building, half an hour to the characters, to the music, to the animation, to how they hired a goddamn kung fu ninjutsu expert to animate on top of his stunt work to make the fights as smooth and realistic as possible, to how every style of bending each of all the four elements is based on a specific kind of martial art, and then how tough Goron's style of bending based on another martial art to make a fight like she's really blind and then you'd still have things left to cover. And it's not just YouTube videos saying it, it's the numbers. Avatar literally broke the Netflix record of staying in the most watched shows on the platform by spending over two goddamn months in the top 10. So yes, indeed, an animated show that was originally geared towards children that released over 15 years earlier broke that record. Then on February 24th, you probably heard about the original co-creators Michael DiMartino and Brian Konetsko, along with Nickelodeon, announced the creation of the Avatar Studios that will solely be dedicated to producing content from inside the world of Avatar, starting with a feature film that will begin production this year. That means that this fictional universe will essentially get the same treatment as the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Star Wars, the two biggest franchises in Hollywood and film history. 
And either for better or worse, Netflix themselves will produce a live-action reimagining of the original series. What other animated show has ever achieved something like this? Because as far as I know, none. And look, I don't want to minimize the accomplishments of other animated TV shows. I mean, Scooby-Doo started in the freaking 60s and it's still going on today. The Simpsons recently renewed their seasons number 33 and 34, meaning that they will end around 2023 with almost 260 episodes. But regardless, this video isn't a comparison. It's a personal story of how I and millions of others became fans of this show and of this franchise. It's a celebration of that miraculous success. And such success for me easily proves why Avatar The Last Airbender became timeless. Thank you guys so much for watching and sticking all the way to the end. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop it a like and subscribe. I'll leave a link in the description and the comments to my Avatar playlist so you can check it out. If you have seen Legend of Korra as well, I promise you are going to love that playlist. I got quite a few more Avatar videos that I'm definitely going to get into, but I think I'm going to be making a video on the Monsterverse first, and then review Godzilla vs Kong once it's out. But I got a ton of ideas for videos I'm going to be making, so stay tuned, stay safe, and I hope to see you guys around here very often. This is me, signing off.